Hello, this is Cindy Blair from the Alexandria Museum of Art. Welcome to another AMOA Art Together Tuesday. Today, we are going to be exploring our feelings about being boxed in by creating art boxes. And historically, shadow box art is something that Joseph Cornell was incredibly famous for, as well as Louise Nevelson and Louise Bourgeois. And I highly recommend you look up their artwork. However, today, we're going to be looking at Mark Rawls, who's an artist in our permanent collection, and he created some really cool box art, as well as Sinlaw Locals, Sue Jordan, and Brenda Howell. I am so excited to be able to share their artwork with you. Now, so when you make a shadow box art, you're gonna to wanna to grab some materials from around the house, um, that things that you find really interesting, but they've kind of been sitting around because you don't really know what to do with them. So this is a great time to pull those things out. And um, I'm gonna walk you through a few other materials that might be really, really helpful. You're gonna need some kind of box. And um, so I'm gonna walk you through all of that. But first, let's look at the artwork. Mark Rawls was born and raised in Shreveport, Louisiana. At age five, his neighbor, artist Clyde Connell, convinced him he would be an artist. His mother also encouraged his love of art through books, museum visits, and art lessons. His work is highly influenced by his mentor, Clyde Connell, his faith, and certain events in his life. The title of this piece is Box Number Two, created in 1991. Central Louisiana local Sue Jordan was inspired by a Madonna she saw created in a sardine can. She also is inspired by old broken jewelry and other art she researches. She loves a creepy vibe in her work, and part of this piece, entitled False Face, is a wing from a bluebird that suffered an untimely death in her chimney. Artist Brenda Howell also lives in Central Louisiana. Her, this piece is entitled, Am Lost. Brenda has recently retired from teaching. This piece is created from a drawer of a student's desk. The houses are made from wooden dowels and she was inspired by the paper to create waves. Here's a project example I did about a year ago for summer camp, just to show you the possibilities if you have a cigar box or something that's double-sided. You can use many different types of containers to create box art. I've seen beautiful work done in suitcases even. The first thing you're going to need to do is find a container. I have some examples here. A little jewelry box would be fine. Um, I found these cans, these tea cans, that might make an interesting container. You just have to figure out how to keep it um, upright. And then a box, an Amazon box. I have a cigar box. I was lucky enough to have a few donated to the museum a while back. So that will make a great uh, container for our box art. So if you have something like that, but if you don't have anything quite that sturdy, that's okay. Just some kind of container. And I'm gonna gather a few things. We need some scissors, of course. You're gonna need possibly a glue gun if you have one. That'll work on certain materials. Um, also, just good old Elmer's glue would be just fine. E6000. If you can get a hold of some E6000, that is a great crafting glue. And some magazines might be good. Um, I have these little stars that I made from um, a shrinky dink material a while back, and I just didn't use them all. So I have a little face that I found. I believe uh, my friend Nancy made that. And then I have these things, which if you've watched my past videos, you know I've been trying to find something to do with those. So I think they might get used today. And my good friend barbecue skewers. They are, so you don't have to have these exact items. Just go around your house and you could use photos. I've got some ribbons here. You can use old toys, really anything you have that you find inspiring or that you just want to do something with. Um, those would be great materials. Okay, so I found this magazine image of a peacock and I'm going to start with that image. 
I've really been inspired by circular imagery lately. And so um, I had an idea. So really allow yourself to be inspired by your materials. Um, those little silver pieces were round. I've really been feeling round things today, like I said. So, um, you know, just allow your materials to guide you. All right, so I'm gonna, you wanna think in layers here. And so I'm thinking about the background of my box, our good old Elmer's glue. And I'm spreading it with my finger. You could also use a craft stick if you're not an animal like I am. Of course, that didn't occur to me till later in the video, but <laughs> that I actually had some craft sticks. And then you're just gonna wanna set that down in there and smooth it out as best you can. Now you might choose to paint the background of your box. You might choose to put some different items in there. There's no wrong answer. Um, really, it's like jazz, you're gonna riff with it. So I have that circular medallion piece that I'm gonna put in the center. So excited to finally be using these things. Okay, and so I'm using my E6000 for this. E6000 is pretty good for a variety of different kinds of materials, which is why it's a great craft glue. Um, Elmer's is great for like uh, paper and things like that, but um, if you're gonna start gluing metal, um, E6000 might be the way to go. It just works for a lot of different things. And then I've got my little face. And I'm gonna use a little bit more E6000 for that. And just press her down. Now the thing about the E6000 is that it doesn't dry instantly. So you're gonna to have to give it a little time, but as you can see, it, it does stick pretty quickly. So you may have to hold something for about a minute and let it, um, let it bond a little bit. Okay, so now I'm attaching my little stars and I'm gonna put those in a circle around the face, trying to keep with my circular pattern. Um, and you, you know, you want to have a lot of different tape shapes and textures in your piece. Um, yeah, here I'm trying to get cute and put the uh, glue on with the skewer, but honestly, that ended up not being necessary. Just experiment with your materials. Okay, so my stars are in place and I thought I wanted to have um, a little bit of darkness. So I found this uh, craft fabric. So, you know, really just dig through. See, look, I'm using the craft stick there. Finally figured it out. Um, really just go through your closet, see what you have. Fabric, you know, you can pull out. I had so much fun pulling out um, things to use. These are things that I haven't used in years. Okay, so now I just decided that I needed a little bit more accent so I added these little sort of dart darting shapes for with the fabric and now I am framing the piece with I found one of like it's an old lanyard chain you know those chains that you know come on different types of uh, lanyards and things and so that's been sitting around I have no idea why I didn't throw that away but now I'm kind of glad I didn't because it made the perfect little frame um, to accent the edges of my piece. Again, E6000, baby. And I'm just working that around the edge there. All right, so that's, I think, all I'm gonna do with the background. And I found these old earrings um, and one of them's broken. And so I decided to take it apart. And I'm, now I'm thinking about sort of the middle ground of my piece. How can I activate the middle ground and foreground of my piece? So I am going to break the earrings apart and attach them to some barbecue skewers that I cut and I'm um, gonna position them around the piece. Now this was a little bit tricky and I had to do a little bit of experimenting on how to get the barbecue skewers to stand up the way I wanted them to. Um, so I ended up having to make like a little post that's stuck up from the back also with the barbecue skewers. Um, 
Okay, so I just marked them off to the different links that I wanted and snap them. Now, with barbecue skewers, you can you can cut them with a wire cutter. Um, I'm sure there's a better solution to that, but um, that seems to work. You just want to hold both sides so they don't snap across the room. And then I painted those black so they blend in with the piece better. Um, actually, if you don't have black paint, a Sharpie marker works too. Um, okay, so I'm using the glue gun for this. Um, that is a metal piece. It would probably be better if I use the E6000. However, um, really was running out of time, so the glue gun's just faster. Um, and this is the final piece. So really just remember to think in layers. You notice I have something in the foreground, the middle ground, and the background of my piece. And remember, making an art box is a little bit like jazz. You're gonna let those materials inspire you and just have fun with it. All right, thanks for joining us for another AMOA Art Together Tuesday. Um, I hope you were able to create a new keepsake and um, that you enjoyed our time together today. Until next time, be safe and be well.